वेलकम लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द मोस्ट अवेटेड क्लास एंड दैट्स ऑन लॉजिकल रीजनिंग द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इंडियन लॉजिक दैट हैज बीन इंट्रोड्यूस इन द सिलेबस अ लॉट ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स हैव बीन अफ्रेड अबाउट दिस टॉपिक बट इट्स अ वेरी वेरी थियोरेटिकल टॉपिक इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड द वेरी बेसिक्स दिस टॉपिक बिकम्स further more interesting for you so let's first talk about the basic introduction so you have two philosophical approaches one is the greek logic and the other is the indian logic both run parallel to one another it's not the ideas are derived from one another the next says the basic concepts of the logic the first section the first paragraph was already there so you already have one question that is being asked on square of a position just one diagram as i always say then you have syllogism problems so square of opposition two videos uh, syllogism the four videos that we have covered are more than sufficient to understand this concept of square of opposition and syllogism problems then you have euler diagram for multiple uh, statements that are given logical reasoning questions are mainly based on the assumption argument and conclusion so assumption is something which is assumed in the passage conclusion is something you draw from the passage an argument could be either strong or weak which you try to stand in for uh, based on the passage that is the given and sometimes there are questions based on inference or theme detection that's done after reading the information that's given in, in the question so these were the kind of general pattern questions that were part of the syllabus so far however as of now we have the new topics that have been introduced and that's the indian logic which is very very important so what are the branches of philosophy we broadly classify those as axiology ontology and epistemology axiology is the study of value ontology is understanding what is reality and epistemology is the study of knowledge we have covered this in a separate lecture so you can just refer that in detail again the classification of indian philosophical schools the orthodox and the heterodox schools the astic and the nastic philosophy has been covered separately the key idea here is when we talk about astic it's not belief in god it's belief in veda so the nastic or the uh, heterodox beliefs are not in the veda and the three schools that follow it are the jain uh, jainism buddhism and charavaks uh, as such you have the sankhya yog nyay vashishk uh, then you have the uttar mimamsa and the purva mimamsa then you have vedant which is basically considered as the later part of the vedas and it's a kind of philosophical teachings of the upanishads that are taken into account similar to vedas we focus on knowledge which is buddhi now this knowledge could be classified as anubhav or smriti smriti is something that is based on memory so it could be yathart or a yathart that is true or false however the anubhav or the presentation could be prama or a prama prama is the valid knowledge that we have a prama is the invalid knowledge so valid knowledge could be in the form of pratyaksh anuman upaman and shabd so all these the six pramanas we have focused in our class separately so just go through that then under the vedas you have the four ved the rigved ya samved yajurved and atharved sorry then you have the fourfold values which are dictated or explained under the vedas those are the dharm kaam arth and moksha then you have pratyaksh that's the first praman and this focuses on the sense organs so through this you have the perception perception could be either internal or external perception external perception is considered as alokic and internal is the lokic then external perception uh, could be further classified as samanya lakshan gyan lakshan and yogya so those are the three categories of extraordinary perception or alokic perception internal perception could be classified fight as uh, so extraordinary perception we have already talked about so under internal perception you have manas and yog and under external perception you have uh, the various sense organs through which you perceive and this is what is the extraordinary perception which is considered as alokic now we have the anuman or the inference so whenever there is a smoke there is fire that's the statement that you can remember for understanding anuman or inference now very simple diagram to help you understand you have the paksh hetu and sadhya the minor term middle term and major term similar to your greek philosophy so the terms remain the same minor middle and major the minor term is the paksh which is the mountain hetu is the reason and that reason is the middle term and that is the smoke you have the major term which is the sadhya and 
that is the also called as the vyapak the middle term is known as vyapya and the relation between hetu and sadya is known as vyapti whenever there is error in the vyapti it is known as hetvabhas and the relation between the paksha and the hetu is explained as paksha dharmata the relation between paksha and sadhya is explained as paramsa so that diagram itself explains a lots and lots of things a lots of concepts under one roof so with this diagram you have the basic idea now we already talked about paksh the characteristics of paksh is known as ling we talked about hetu sadhya then you have the drishtant that is the example that is given and paksh dharmata which is the special feature of the subject that is there so types of vyapti types of anuman are another important questions that could be part of your uh, examination we have the purvat sesavat and samantrudarsh so those are types of anuman that we focus on uh, then we have a valid argument and what are the characteristics of valid argument so you have a proposition which is known as pratinja the reason for it which is the hetu you explain it through an udharan or a drishtan then you try to compare it which is upnayan and then finally you come up to a conclusion which is the nigam or justification which is the sthapana so those are the steps under valid argument similarly when we focus on hetva bhas we have the five fallacies that we talk about under indian logic so it's savya vichar viruddha सत प्रतिपक्ष असिद्ध और बदिता अगेन सभ्य विचार इज एक्सप्लेन अंडर थ्री हेड्स साधारण असाधारण एंड अनुपम संभारी विरुद्ध इज वॉट इज अपोजिट so whenever you are talking about opposite facts for example air is heavy but air is empty so you are talking about at one end that air is heavy but the other end it's empty so it's already occupied by something so it is a viruddha hitvabhas that means the things are contradictory to each other similarly you have asid which is a futile reason without anything under savya vichar you have hetu the reason which is inconsistent or inconstant we could say so those are the various classifications the sub classification of hitvabhas very very important then the next is upaman which is a kind of comparison so let's say you see a animal similar to cow so you compare it to a cow so under this you have the six steps that are important so under anuman the knowledge that is derived is anumati under upman the knowledge that is derived is upamati now sanjana is the name sanjini is the object uh, sadasya is the comparison then you have recollection upamati and finally the upaman then shabda testimony or the verbal testimony is important A authoritative person says you something so you have the apta vakya that is the statement given by a trustworthy person or agam which is the author, uh, which is the authentic words that he has given up then you have the words or the pad sentence or the vakya that are being explained uh, the characteristics of sentences are explained as uh, akanksha yogyata asti or tatparya so those are some of the important aspects then you have arthpati that is presupposition or postulation or deriving a kind of circumstantial knowledge for example a person is fat he does not eat during the day time so might be there is a possibility that he eats a lot during the night time so under this you have postulation at hand and postulation from what is seen so those are the categories under arthpati then anubhavi is the lack of knowledge or abhav it is also called as non apprehension non cognition so there are various aspects that are explained under it so you have posterior and anterior non existence that we focus on then you have the greek logic where we focus on formal and informal fallacies formal fallacies the most important is appeal to probability where you say there are dark clouds so probably it would rain so it's just an appeal to probability you have bad reason fallacy that is there uh, you, let's say you say uh, that uh, dogs are afraid of height and then you conclude dogs cannot fly so that's a kind of uh, a bad reason fallacy that's been given the reason is not apt with the conclusion that is being coming up similarly you have non skeeter uh, masked man fallacy so those are various formal fallacies the informal fallacies are due to incorrectness or the invalid form that is being established so there are four ways under which uh, fallacies are explained so you have fallacies of relevance defective induction presumption and ambiguity so those are the four fallacies that are there now fallacies of relevance 
popularly are the appeal to populace that is what popular belief says you just believe that whether it's true or not so that's a kind of appeal to populace appeal to emotion a child saying something he does not understand the thing and you believe it then you have red herring which Uh, students or children usually try to convince their parents for uh, they ask them something and they respond something and confuse the parent the parent forget what what is being asked of so that's a kind of red herring so those are all fallacies of relevance you have straw man fall- fallacy attack an argument against the person then fallacies of defective induction where you focus on arguments from ignorance you don't know something and you argue on that you have an appeal to inappropriate authority a person who is not good for the given knowledge gives you a suggestion to do something false cause is another uh, reason for defective induction fallacies of presumption basically talked about uh, accident a kind of complex question could be there or begging about the questions that could be there then you have fallacies of ambiguity uh, this mainly focuses on equivocation you have the accent so the way uh, the the tone in which one speaks the composition the division and the amphiboly so those are some of the fallacies of ambiguity so each of those we would be covering separately under different videos so stay tuned for many more updates before your net examination and yes as we said this was one of the very important topics so cover this very scoring and definitely you would have a good score in this section if you go through the simple concepts clearly have a wonderful day ahead